Wow, we have someone here that I am personally super excited to announce. I have followed her like for, for years now um, already. Um, this is um, Pungabu Kona Obrut from the Fire Events from Nigeria. Thank you so, so, so much for being Thank with you. us here today. It's Thank a real you for honor. I, I call you the mother of weddings and events in Africa, actually. Like, this is really like how I see you in the industry and in the, on the African continent. Um, I think you have done amazing work for the industry. Um, you are a very inspiring person. Um, but I think what I would like to hear from you is what like what was your vision how did you start your business and who is funke and what inspires her apart from dancing <laughs> <laughs> i love that thank you very much um so i mean honestly thank you for having me i always love to be on platforms like this and it's really also speaking to my sisters from south africa so based in south africa so basically what, what was my vision? My vision was, I had a vision of, and this was about 18 years ago, I had a vision mm -hmm. of taking the stress off people. So when people were getting mm -hmm. married, weddings were very stressful, extremely stressful. They would be the ones mm -hmm. to do all the running around. They would be the ones to go see the vendors, you know, go to see the photographer, have all the meetings, you know, and then they would be the ones that would also think of the ideas, the concept. And then on the day of the event, it would be their family, their auntie, their sister that would help them. And usually it turned out into, I would say, probably sometimes a disaster. So I found out that people yeah. were very stressed out. And so when my friends were getting married, I saw that they were stressed. So I said, you know what? Let me help you. Let me take the stress off you. That was the first vision. Because the truth about it is that the vision actually changed along the way but the first initial vision was mm. we wanted to take the stress off our clients off our brides you know and it was just about taking the stress off them that was all that we, di we didn't care about experiences we didn't care about um creating so maybe magic moments it was just at that time it was we wanted to just take okay. the stress of them of course along the way creating memories creating magic moments you know making it personal now came in but at the initial stage it was and we wanted to be a world class event planning organization event planning organization where you come in and it's a one-stop solution so that was the original that was the vision when, when i started about 18 years ago now you asked mm -hmm. me what inspires me so many things inspire me but the first thing that inspires me i think is just seeing the work around. So I, I get a lot of inspiration from all over the world, from seeing other people's ideas, other people's work, what other people have done. You know, how people have been able to create magic from nothing. It actually does inspire me because I look at people's creativity and I'm, and I'm marveled by it. So that inspires me. I also get inspired by, of course, reading magazines, going on YouTube, watching um looking up at pinterest everybody looks at pinterest you get inspired mm -hmm. you know and um you know just even hearing conversations from my friends from my brides from my clients it actually does inspire me you know and then of course i get inspiration from even my team so the ideas that come up the solutions all those things as well actually does inspire me and what else you know i think you asked the question about you know what else do i like or do you know apart from dancing <laughs> yeah. honestly i just i just love love i love life i love um, engaging people i love mm. teaching i love um, i love i love motivating i love encouraging people i love the power of community yeah. i'm very big on the power of community i think that we can't do anything by ourselves we need people we need to do things together i'm very big on that so that those things keep me going and those are the things that i love you know apart from dancing i love dancing i love music i love dancing but i just love you know um teaching encouraging i love I love creating memories. I love, I love that mm -hmm. when people, mm -hmm. when we finish an event, everybody's happy. Everybody goes away with, oh my God, that was just amazing. I had so much fun, you know? So I love, those are some of the things that I love. Amazing. When, when I actually got the first time years back, when I got to know about you, um, I, I was a kind of like, oh, what is this? I saw you sitting in the car, chatting with people like, 
so like emotionally, you know, like I said, like who is this actually? Like she she has such a, a powerful um like emotion, energy. you know, like energy, yeah. yeah. And you were sitting in a car, just like normal, you know, like I don't know where it was and, and what it was about, but um that was actually the first time I met you on, on Instagram or on Facebook. I can't even remember what it was. And since that, I thought, okay, I must actually see what this lady is doing, you know? And I came across your energy towards you. And I think this is something, this is uh, very, very, um, let's say, Nigerian. You have this sparkle, you have this connection to people. And I mean, I had the, the honor to meet you um, on your on your event um uh, you were organizing uh, like a, a kind of um the event uh, yeah events the events as well event yes. yes nigeria yes the experience exactly uh, thank you much again for inviting me it was very eye opening to me um what what happens in your country what happens actually to be in Africa with other uh, with other colleagues, I I got to know a lot actually about fashion trending in Nigeria. I mean, we all knew Nigeria is is one of the top countries for weddings for events. But for me, it was really interesting um, to see that and also to see how many people you you get together from different angles of our industry in not only in Nigeria but also um, in, in Africa. Do you, do you think we still have a long way to go to be more connected or do you think already this uh, like kind of time right now, this pandemic has actually one of these good um, outcomes that it brought us all together so much, which actually not a normal life would have be possible. Okay, yes. So thank you. I, I So the good and the bad. So I would say that this period has really brought us all together. This period has brought, I think, the events on industry closer. A lot of people are engaging with each other. I mean, things that we never thought we could do. So, I mean, you can, you can talk to me now from South Africa. Normally, maybe what we would have done is we would have said, come down to Nigeria. Or, you know, we're not making use of our communication about dig the digital tools, technology more. So this has helped us to use technology more. This has helped us to see that, you know, th the continent is not as big as we think. So I would say that's the good. Now, the, the bad, or well, not the bad, but more like what can be better is that even human connection is still very important. Human connection, we still need to see each other, hug each other you know, sometimes see each other face to face. So there'll be the room for that. But what the bad, why, why I said the bad a little bit is that initially travel within Africa was very difficult. It's very difficult. I think that that's one of the things that the government as well need to focus on to make sure that travel within Africa is easier. Trade and travel within Africa is easier. It's cheaper for me to go to London than, it's ch than, than to go to some countries in Africa. It shouldn't be. Sometimes it takes you two days, three days to get to some countries in Africa when you can go direct with a direct flight. But then, so traveling within Africa is, is very tough. Also, tourism in Africa. So we're so used to going outside Africa f to get the great things, to see the great um, scenarios, you know, the great sceneries. But we have a lot of this in, in Africa. So it, it's left, I think this is the period for mm -hmm. us to be able to build our domestic tourism. But of course, the challenge, you know, when I talked about travel, even challenge is also security. Security is a big issue, you know, but security is also a big issue in other parts of the world. But they don't make it, they don't make it as 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 big as we do make it. So we just need to work on it with the government. But I think that the, this period has brought us together more. We are sharing ideas more. We're communicating. We are um, learning and engaging with each other more. We are able to speak to so many more people. I mean, I've been on webinars. I've seen a thousand people, 2,000, 3,000, 500 on, on a webinar. These are webinars that normally, if you had a conference like that, you would have had only 300 people, 100 people. But you're getting so many people in a room and we're having conversations with them. I think it's really amazing. And I think that that's the good of what this has done, really, for us in Africa. Yeah. Mm. And I think 
there's also so much um, amazing going on in Africa. This is always what we say. Uh, sometimes I think uh, we in Africa have not the right um, way to distribute our um, our like, or those things that are actually very um, special and very beautiful. We have not uh, enough ability to put it out into the world. Yes, uh, yes. Yeah. Like in yes. London, New York, yes. in I don't yes. know where. Amazing things happen. Yeah. But also in Nigeria, in Cape Town, in Bolivario, in I don't know where, um, here in Africa, amazing things happen, but we do not really have the right way yet, I think, uh, to, to, to distribute this information to the world. I mean, yeah. I have seen like people coming here to Africa celebrating. Um, they've been invited and they said, oh my God, how beautiful is this? How amazing. And Positively how, surprised. Yeah, yeah, they are so surprised because they haven't expected like that. And I think uh, maybe for the future, all of us have to work more Project. on yes. putting out our... Project our, our, yes. yes. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And um, and I think um, like somebody like you um, with a lot of inspirational um, like ideas, um, you you can like take people with you on on our continent. We always say it's now time for Africa. You know, like I mean, we as Europeans living in Africa for so long, we feel more. African than European, not nonetheless that we had actually our roots there. But uh, but I think Africa needs people like you to to actually move the industry um, like into the future. And I I think. Mm. Have to do to bring Africa more into perspective. Yeah, sorry, I lost you there for a, a few seconds. Just a few seconds before perspective. Say it again. I said I lost you. Can you hear me? I, I lost you a bit. Oh, Just sorry. for a few seconds. I said what all what you think all of us have to do to bring Africa more into perspective on the map yes. of the world. Industry. Yes. What, what, what do you yes. think from your like what do you think we all have to do more? I think we just have to project the image, the good images, project the good. You know, we project the bad a lot. So I think we need to just project the good, you know, mm -hmm. create um, um, where, where all the good places, all the places that are beautiful, tell our story. We need to tell our stories. I think that that's what mm -hmm. I, I have learned. We need to tell our stories more. We need to tell our stories in a good way. You know, don't let it be negative. We, we allow the, the international press to tell our stories in a negative way. We have to tell our stories more in a positive way. We need to show Africa. We need to highlight what is good about our country. You know, because yeah. even internationally, everywhere, there's the good and the bad. But you always see the good. So we need to mm -hmm. just tell our stories more. We need to make, make it a big deal. You know, tell our stories. You know, I remember even Ghana. Um, in, 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 um, this Ghana started this, the homecoming. You know, where the people started coming, going to Ghana in December, they were telling their stories. They were telling, you know what? Well, yes, this is what we are about. There was slavery. Come and see it. But guess what? We are now, we're Africa. We're the giants. We're, we're, we're big. You know, I want you to see how beautiful our country is. Of course, there'll be mm -hmm. the, the parts of our country that are not great, but come and see the good. Come and see the good. And while you're here, mm -hmm. go back and tell other people. So we need to just tell our stories more. As Africans, we must tell our stories more. That's what I've learned. Yes, then I think you're an amazing ambassador, like not only for Nigeria, but for Africa, like generally. I think that is like, you, you really inspire a lot of people. And even just to make them curious, what is this Africa all about that you are talking about? And I think that is really something very, very special. Can I maybe take you a little bit because I think a lot of people, they know about your status in the industry. 
But can I take you back like more than maybe 20, 25 years ago? Because I think right now a lot of people are also at the stage where they may be, I think pivot is the right word right now that a lot of people are using. They don't know whether what they're doing is the right thing at the moment. What were you doing before you were in events? Like what what made you like go into this event direction where you said, you know what, this is my heart. I really believe that I need to, as you said, I need to make it easier for the brides. I need to make it easier for the people. But what is your, like when you maybe look at the Funke before events, like what was she doing and what opened the way for the event industry? Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay, so I studied law. I'm a lawyer by training. <laughs> I studied law in university. And, but while I was studying law, I law wasn't what I wanted. I didn't want to be a lawyer, but you know what? In years and years ago, when I was younger, in Nigeria at that time, there were some courses that you could. Those were the professions that your parents felt you needed to do. So mm -hmm. law, um, some professions that you needed to do. So there was law. There was um, being a doctor, being an engineer, being um, you know so. My parents, I mean, just thought, you know what, you need to be a lawyer. So, of course, I thought, okay, not a problem. So, I studied law, went into law school, you know, went into law school. And while I was there, so it was while I was in law school, I realized, I, I had known since I was in university that law wasn't for me. I had known. But I didn't know in what direction I was going. I didn't know what, mm -hmm. I didn't know the path I, was, I wanted to take. That's the real truth. But I just knew that law wasn't for me. But I didn't know what was for me. Because the reason why I'm saying this is that a lot of people feel pressured and think that they must know what they want to do now. I didn't mm -hmm. know what I wanted to do. I didn't know when I was in university what I wanted to do. But I knew what I didn't want to be. So I think that that's the first step that anybody needs to take. I didn't. I knew what I didn't want to be. So while I was in law school, a few of my friends were getting were about to get married. So I started helping them. So okay. a friend would say, "I need to do this," and I would say, "Oh, let me help you. Let me do this. Let me get. You. Let me just help you. Let me run for you. Run an errand for you." So when mm -hmm. I got back to Lagos, um, because I was in another state. Law school was in Abuja, the capital of, of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, yeah. I, Lagos. So when I got back, I started helping them. So it was from helping them, I realized, wait, mm -hmm. can I start charging? But at that time, I didn't even know I could charge. So when I finished law school, I told my parents, I actually went to work in a law firm for three weeks. But <laughs> when, yeah, so after, after the third week, I said, no, I can't do this. Law is it for me. Let me try um, um, advertising, mass communications, because that was another course that I thought I would love. Because I just felt I like PR, I like talking. So I thought maybe TV was for me, broadcasting, you know. I didn't really know what it was, but I just knew that maybe this was my field. So I went to work in an advertising agency. Now, in, in Nigeria, there's, we, there's something called um, um, NYSC, National Youth Service Corps. It's a program that you do. Once you finish university, you must serve. It's like a voluntary service, a one-year voluntary service that you must give the mm -hmm. nation. Mm -hmm. So, And while you're doing it, you work in an organization. So I worked in an advertising agency while I was there, thinking that, okay, maybe this is the path for me. Let me work in this um, advertising agency during this period, and maybe this is what I want to do. But I found myself leaning more towards the helping my friends during planning their wedding process, running the errands. And that was just how it started. So I just realized that, oh, okay, I think I can do this. So I started doing that. While I was still working in the advertising agency, Okay. So immediately my one year was over, I told the MD of the organization then, and I said, I think I need to leave. I think I want to go into this event. I want to do events. And mm -hmm. he gave me his blessing. I went to Aron in a business school, and that's how I started. So and that's, how, that's actually how my journey started. And when I started now, the real truth is, when I started, I also didn't really know the clear vision. But I just mm -hmm. knew I wanted to help people. It was along mm -hmm. the way I, it became clearer to me that this was what I wanted to do. So it wasn't a clear path. Because a lot of times, the reason why I'm saying this is that there are young people that want to go into doing what they love. Yeah. There, are, um, there are young people, there are people that want to change directions of their career or their profession. And they are feeling pressured. 
into thinking mm -hmm. that this must be the clear path. Some people don't even know the direction of in which they want to go until they are 50, until they are 40, yes. until they are 45. Some people yes. might have been doing something and, at 25 and realize at 50 that they were doing the wrong thing all their lives. So I think that yeah. the, the, when people shouldn't just be pressured to conform to a certain way of of life, or that this is how life thinks it, things should be for me. Um, I stumbled, and I keep on saying it, that I stumbled into this profession. I didn't have a clear path into this mm -hmm. profession. I stumbled mm -hmm. into it, and I was now able to now create the path, and I was able to mm -hmm. break the path and realize this is what it was for me. Because I was, I think along the way, I, I now became focused. I had a vision, and I realized that I this was a dream oh you know my mm -hmm. I, I maybe i would say my purpose people say it was my purpose I, but i i just know this was a dream this was my passion and it just came naturally to me so that's how yes. that's kind of like what i did before and how i got here that I is think, yeah, yeah that's actually very interesting yeah. because also like if if i go back when i was 20 i mean i want to become a vet you know that was my dream actually uh, i i was far away actually from the, or i'm far away from that i i had another like two professional excuses i'm always saying that was my first life and that was my second life and now i'm in my third life actually so i had a jewelry um company we made a beautiful jewelry and then i went to the um to the industry in medical it uh, so it was a totally different thing and if somebody would have told me I ever will uh, do events or I'm r running a flower import, I would have said, you are dreaming that that that's never possible, you know, um, that that's so much different from uh, what what my dreams were. But what I think and what is very important, what you also said is that this is a road to go and yeah. we should see what is on the road actually the opportunities, the opportunities. Like the doors. and i think this is also yes. why i wanted to speak to you because what i feel right now a lot of people are very mm, they are in a very negative lost. space right they now are you know? they are lost um i mean it is a very tough situation for a lot a lot of businesses across the industry across like yes. the world basically and not only yes. in the event industry in the flowers catering photography, videography, DJ, you know, so it is not just like the event, like coordinating industry, but it is so much more than that. And I think what is what is necessary for people to, to realize is that when you have decided that this is the right way to go, you will find an opportunity yeah. that will open another door for you. And you just, you have to hang in there. And I think that is the real message because right now we see that a lot of people are down and I, I understand because I mean, it's really something they, they fear for their business. They fear for the security of their families. Um, yes. And it's a real struggle. Um, but therefore, we love to bring people like you who also have a very personal story, you know, who are also open about that things did not just happen like in the blink. I mean, when you say 18 years, you have seen a lot in those past 18 years to achieve what you have like in front of you right now. And you're not even at the end of what your vision is for the future. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. So that's why I'm 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 very glad actually, and that you opened also to that subject that people maybe who feel they are not in the right space right now, to to understand that there is a possible way that you can overcome this, and that you can yes. like go yes. where your passion is driving you towards, um, yes. and and this is really something that is that is amazing um, to hear, and I think right now um, a lot of people are rethinking. Am I doing the right thing? Am I really like passionate about my business? Because I think right now, if you're not passionate about your business, you will not survive. What is your take on it? Yeah, I think that, um, so, okay, so for everyone, there will be different um, um, ways that everybody will come out of this period. Um, even if you're passionate, sometimes you may be passionate, but you don't have the the required skills or you don't have the 
um, the network to help your business. So I think at this time, what everybody just needs to do, even with the passion that you have, you need to try and upgrade your skills. You need to look mm -hmm. inwards into your business and really see that, is this really, am I in the right business? Why did I do this? In the, why am I here in the first place? So I think that the why you are doing it is what will matter. So if it's about money, okay all well and good it was about impact all well and good if it was about to to serve humanity if it was about to to show love to give care you know all well and good but the key thing is whatever passion you have you need to back it up you know so this is a period to back up that passion with many things you know build um, upgrade your skills um go through your processes in the organization um look at your life this is the time to actually look at your life and look at how can yeah. you upgrade even your own personal life as well. So, yeah, passion yeah. is good and passion will help you at this time. But you know what? If you're also running a business where you have a large team of people, there's no revenue coming in. This is the time to think, that, OK, what are, I, what are we going to do? You know, is this mm. time to think, do I need to let? So for your business to survive this period, you may need to let some people go. Or you don't let anybody go, but you guys all work together to determine how you will all survive. So this is the time to engage your team. This is the time. This is not the time to do it by yourself. Yeah. I'm very big on that. I think that this is the time yeah. that everybody needs to lean on somebody else. You know, yes. lean on someone's expertise, lean on someone's voice, lean on someone's network, lean on someone's skill, you know, learn something, you know, and, you know, just be at peace. You know, so I think that, yeah, passion will, will, will help, but I'm not sure that passion is the only thing that will keep you from your business um, um, not surviving or surviving. Yeah. And I think, I mean, this is why we also call this a piece of the puzzle, you know, because we believe that everyone is just a small piece in the bigger picture. So as you said, rightfully, like collaboration and partnerships and just reaching out to other people and just checking in with other people that you might not yes. even, I mean, collaborate with right now, but just to check yes. on people to make sure that they are okay, that they maybe... Yes yeah just maybe they need something that you can provide and even if it's just a contact or a number or a name or whatever it might be right now i think this is like what what would set you apart from from many others and can, I, yeah I would just like to say after the first week of lockdown here and i mean here in south africa we really have a lockdown i mean a, a very strict lockdown which is uh, maybe a bit different from any other uh, countries and in, in, in the surroundings. Um, we, we have actually given one of our ladies in the office the duty to call each and every of, of our clients because we wanted to give them the feeling we are there. I mean, even if we cannot sell anything because uh, the, the, the industry was shut completely down. shut down, so there was no one flower um, to sell, but th this was not the purpose. The purpose was actually the personal connection to have someone uh, to check on you. And I think a lot of um, our clients were very much surprised and they said, um, that's so nice, actually. Uh, nobody has has called me so far and I think this is what it is it's it's not all about business the business is is sometimes coming in the in the second um, line but it's about connection it's about like caring human, about yeah. human interaction right now yes. yeah yeah can I ask you, because this is really interesting for a lot of people, obviously, in the event and wedding industry that are watching right now, because a lot of African countries have different um, rules and regulations during this pandemic right now. So we, as we said in South Africa, we are still in stage four out of five. Um, so working like downwards, so that means we, we don't even know when things are going to ease up a little bit. We hope to hear tonight when the president is speaking yeah. again uh, to hear what is going to go on, mm -hmm. but we don't know. But other, some other countries, they, they, they have it a little bit easier with events. I followed you last week um, uh, and, and I think you can share a little story that is maybe a little bit uplifting, even though that it was, was a very, very small and intimate event. But but tell us a little bit more about the, the wedding that you have organized. And I think that will, I, I hope, like bring some light to some people that maybe have not heard that weddings are taking place anytime soon. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay. So in Nigeria, we had a total lockdown um, as well, where initially, but it got eased last week 
where we, we people could um, start going to work, but there was a restriction on the time. So um, when the, the government announced that, there was still a lockdown on gathering, but the only mm -hmm. way you can only gather if you are not more than 20. Mm -hmm. So you must be less than 20 people in a room. And, and, and of course, you must maintain social distancing and things like that. So what we did was a bride of ours who was supposed to get married on the 1st of May um, reached, no, yeah, first, reached out to us and said, I mean, we had always been communicating reached out and said you know what i want to get married i just want to go to my i want to have my wedding i don't yeah. want to wait i don't want to wait anymore i want to have my wedding and i will do it just the two of us and that was yeah. what she came to us and i and she said so i asked that who else would be there so we counted the number of people that would be there including the the team that would um film the document and we had mm -hmm. to make sure that there were less than 20 in a room at the time mm -hmm. so what we did was we just we we we, we um, spoke to everybody. We had a meeting with everyone. We, for example, for the food and drinks, we didn't sell food and drinks there. It was packed to go, so the guests mm -hmm. took the food away. Um, we provided, of course, um, hand sanitizers, cleaning measures. We provided um, um, masks for the guests, and mm -hmm. we ensured that you know for the decor team, they came in the day before to set up mm -hmm. the place, and they left. And it was in a, in our parents' house. Because you can't in gather a, in, yeah, yeah, I to say, it was in a private home. Yeah. Yes, it was a yes, the per, in our parents' house. So we just had, you know, the um, um, sitting room cleared out. In fact, I, I should share the before and after of that picture. Mm -hmm. So the sitting room cleared out and it was set up and it was, I, I would say, it was very beautiful. And then, so that yeah. was the day before. Yeah. And then on the day, we had the officiating minister come, you know, we joined them together, her parents, his parents. And one of a few of their friends. And then, of course, we had a DJ, we had a saxophonist who played at some point and left. So, and then, mm -hmm. of course, we had the makeup artists, the hairstylists who came in in the morning, but were in the room and left. So, everybody, we made sure that at any point in time, in each of the spaces, we were not more than 20. So mm -hmm. and that was how we were able to achieve that. And we were able to give her a little bit of a dream. So, you know, the, the officiating minister came, had the ceremony, they had their first dance, you know, and then we created a, a, a little part of, you know, someone being like a, an MC. And then what we now did as well to make other people feel like they were part of the ceremony, all the, all the other guests, over 100 of them or so, joined us online via a mm -hmm. video conferencing app and they were able to watch the ceremony from the beginning to the end you know so it was very nice but to be truthful it was also very strange mm -hmm. it was very strange it was very strange because there was a lot of oh don't come near me oh no 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 move away oh no stand far away oh you know mm -hmm. it was it was weird because mm. we're used to hugging each other we're used to yeah dancing exactly together. yeah you know yeah, and then yeah. you're telling people oh stand far you know no 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 don't hug me don't touch me oh no stand mm. like this do like that. ah it was a bit strange you know even the photographers the videographers they were not used to it because they're used mm. to diff many people working on their team they're used to a, a lighting person they're used to the to the crew being large so even getting yeah. the crew to be small was tough you mm. know so it was very strange but but because i knew that that the bride and groom wanted to create memories this was mm. what they wanted to start their life they wanted to go and just start their life mm. so yeah. it had to happen so i think that for anyone any event planner or any client memories are not cancelled celebrations are not cancelled yeah. we can create memories we can create the celebrations parties the big parties is what is not happening so i think that even for um where there's a total lockdown i think that maybe one of the things that one can do is just that i don't know if they allow oh no they don't allow movement right no movement no. No. no even okay. not uh official even not just like ceremonies like marriage um is right not now is nothing not, is not even no, yes. official will come out to make yeah. a, because we have we have a couple that is waiting mm -hmm. for the moment that like the the any like the government will say even if it's we'll just two that. people yes. they will go and get married yes yeah, but yes right so that's now, it. so we'll just have to wait you know i would say mm -hmm. that health and safety is the most critical we yes. must be we all, we, we all have to be alive to actually yes. or get to actually yes. do any celebration. So I think that they, what they should just do for everyone that is waiting, everyone should just use the opportunity to, you know, learn more about themselves, you know, like, you know, just do more things together and just keep hope alive. I think that the key thing is keeping hope alive. Everyone just mm -hmm. realizing that once we're all alive, 
we'll be able to celebrate very, very, very soon. Yeah. I think that is a very nice saying um, because a, a lot of people are a bit hopeless. And I, I, um, I think sometimes even if we do not see the light on the end on the at the end on the tunnel but there is light at the end on the tunnel um yes. sometimes we have to just wait for it and particularly yes. here uh, in south africa where we expect no weddings like earlier than next year because like what we feel and how we actually see the situation that there was there will no wedding be take place this year but i think um the when we all have a possibility to survive until that time and i mean not physically surviving but business wise surviving i mean um then next year will be a very 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 happy but also a very stressful year because a lot of because like everybody, yes. postponed Every and day. have yeah yes. exactly so we will be dead maybe just like because of um of the stress that <laughs> that we yes. get next year uh but but i think this is the the hope and um, a lot of people should just like look towards 2021 and i think uh there is a couple of months that we have in between still and you with what you just described i think it was very interesting because you you have something um like experienced what we all still have ahead of us uh, because yes, yes. you have experienced how it feels actually to do one of yes. these new kind of yes. weddings <laughs> where yes. we will all go in uh, next year and it's very interesting that you say it is in a certain way it is of, of course possible but it's also a bit a bit strange and, and we all feel that uh, because as you said before a wedding and in particular our industry even if we meet people that work together for a long time we have each other it's when about we emotions meet. you yeah. know like i mean yes. for me very personally this mask i know it's important but for me it takes away like a smile even like it's, you know yeah, just like, it's just, yes. someone's emotion yeah i'd rather stay at home than go out <laughs> you know i'd rather yes. stay home because the mask you don't even know who is behind the mask you don't know it's so yes. personal yeah, yes and, and even go shopping you know i mean for me it's such a stress level because i don't see anyone like whether they are sad whether they are happy whether they are like for me this mm. is stressful like right now like personally on a very yes. personal level it's stressful more to go out now like with all of this yes, um yes. Than, than to just stay at home and to just like i mean watch you like this i'm 100 percent happy because i see your smile i see like your your movement and I see, yeah. you know there is an election and there is someone that is interacting with me and this is i think also events and specific like specifically weddings it's about the yes. love it's about the feeling it's about what comes across when you see a person walking down the aisle when you see someone hugging mm -hmm. Like, or, and kissing each other i mean this is what 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 marriage is all about you know yeah. and i think people right now and also maybe couples even though it is hard to wait i also personally even would advise to just wait a little bit longer mm -hmm. for the hope that things can be come just a little bit more normal um yeah. I, I, this is my take on it because things like if things have not happened right now then don't force it like to become what is maybe not even possible yes, yes, from yes. imagination that the, the the bride has in her mind because as you said right now there will be service suppliers that will come with the mask that will come with the gloves that will come and look very sterile um mm -hmm. and don't bring a very warm feeling even though if they are like warm and happy chappy people you know yes, uh, but yes. it's just not gonna be the same as maybe hopefully towards mid next year mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. tell us a bit tell us a bit about um your vision for um for the next um e event experience um i think um for, you had actually planned to go to ghana and to go across africa with your event uh, this, this has not happened because then COVID came. Um, so, so how do you want actually to move on with with this uh, type of yeah 
our platform. Okay, so I think, I mean, with everything that is happening, definitely, definitely, um, we can go, uh, we probably possibly can't have a physical one even next year. So, I mean, we're definitely reworking our model. We're trying to, we're, we're trying to rework, you know, what best way to bring this experience and make it an experience that people will will want to be a part of so that's what we're working on um because the truth is i mean right now what even everybody needs is that encouragement what we've realized everybody just wants uh, everybody's a ton nobody knows what to do nobody knows where to go so what we're doing at the back is just trying to build on that encouragement you know and we're working on the platform of how best we can do it um next year so we're still working on that but definitely we know that we can't do any phys anything physical for now mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. But um, I, I, I think uh, it is like about the idea right now when you say you, you think you cannot do it um, like physically, you just want to do it online. Um, I would offer you maybe an hour or, or whatever time uh, to introduce different flowers uh, to, to people in the event industry. Because what I, I have spoken to a couple of Nigerian florists just like this week, that's why it comes to my mind. And um, they are very uh, keen to import different flowers. I also spoken to a flower farm in Nigeria. They, they first time they grow flowers uh, in Nigeria. And I was very actually excited to see things going on in this way because it's not all about only importing, but what you can grow in your own country is actually very exciting and i think i take my hat off for all those people they have the the, the courage uh, to to farm in their own countries and i mean mm -hmm. nigeria is most probably not the the country well known for for flower uh, mm -hmm. farming uh, but i think um to start something like that um is, is really amazing to see and there's lots of things going on here in africa i think in the particularly in the flower industry and flowers are such an essential part of of every wedding so if if you like take me up uh, for an introduction of, of very unique flowers and maybe also of, of local grown flowers um i think they would be happy uh, to also introduce their flowers to a bigger audience in their own country mm, okay not a problem at all <laughs> that's a great Perfect. one Yes. So, um, so just maybe as a as a last like roundup, um, for, for people who who are watching out there and um, and 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 they think about what are Nigerian weddings. I mean, we as being part of Africa is all about. We know what Nigerian weddings are all about. But when you go abroad and you are speaking like a lot in different other countries, usually when it's safe to travel. How would you explain someone who has never seen a Nigerian wedding? What is a Nigerian wedding all about? Ooh. A, Nigerian <laughs> wedding. a Nigerian wedding, first of all, is a is a celebration, and it's a celebration of families, families, yeah. extended and nuclear families. Very critical, extended and nuclear families. So it's a celebration. It's a it is an exuberant event. You know, it's full of life. It's 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 full of culture, you know. Mm -hmm. So I mean we we do different types. We do the traditional, we do the um the white um the, the um ceremony, you know. So it's full of life, it's full of culture, it's full of um it's it's very colorful. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. it's extremely colorful, and it's you know, and it's we're very big on our food. We're very big. The food must be banging. We're big. <laughs> we have a lot of food. We're big on drinks. We're big on. We're big on. We're big on music. Mm -hmm. I don't know that. Yeah. Really, I, I don't know anybody loves music more than us. We love our music. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, a, Niger a typical Nigerian wedding is a yeah. wedding that has all this and most especially i would say it has heart it mm -hmm. has heart so you come to a nigerian wedding and you feel like you've been part of something so profound i think that that's what i would say about it it has heart it has soul so that's a nigerian wedding 
Wonderful. I think like everyone that has not any like spark, like felt for weddings in Nigeria has felt it right now when you said it. Yeah. And I think also from my, like just or from my view, it's the, it's the colors, like as yeah. you say it, the colors and yes. the, the vibrancy, like you can just yes. feel that there's tension in the room. Um, when, when, when yeah when the bride and the groom will come out and they come dancing and i think it's just such a joyful and happy occasion um and i think families i mean families for every wedding i think that is just um the priority that families meet and they melt and they um just become one um and 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 but it's amazing so thank you so much yeah. i think that was i also wonderful. think the dancing is something what i really oh, really yeah. like music, i should have said music and dancing together Yes, yeah, sorry. yeah. Dancing. I think every every African has a has a gene to dance. Like this, this. is what we are as Europeans. No. We are lacking. You know, there is no <laughs> way, no way that we can ever pull off an African wedding, even if we would like have the most colorful wedding on earth. But it's just not possible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you so so much, Funko, for Thank your you time. For it was really. It was really um, very nice. And I think um, I thank you for also sharing a little bit of your private personal story. Um, I know it's not always easy, but it's beautiful to see that everyone has a story. You know, everyone has a history. And um, I mean, I'm just very, very thankful that you shared your time with us. Um, you're doing thank amazing you. things. You're an inspiring thank person. Um, I think a lot of people and also younger people can learn a lot from your from your career path already and just keep on keep on dancing okay yeah. keep on dancing and inspiring thank people thank you thank for you your so time much. thank you for having me thank you for inviting me thank you so so much the pleasure was just um we love you funke we just get you know that is an there's no better final statement no we, we love, love you too. funke <laughs> bye bye funke take care bye of yourself bye. stay safe bye bye bye, bye.